Hey friends, welcome back to The Morning Mindset. I hope you're ready this day to get your minds aligned with the truth of God. I would also just love to hear from some of you in regards to how The Morning Mindset has been used by the Lord to encourage you, to build up your faith, to help you out of a difficult spot. And I would love to hear that in your own voice. You can go to carrygreen.com slash story and share your story with me in audio form. We may even use those on an episode of The Morning Mindset to encourage others with the need they may have to consistently be built up by the Word of God through something like The Morning Mindset. Please go, carrygreen.com slash story, and share your story with me. All right, today we are looking at how to get treasure, acceptance, and love. Aren't those all things that we want, that we desperately want and need? I mean, treasure, acceptance, love— those are the things that, that the world is striving after. And the book of Proverbs tells us exactly who God gives those to. Let's read. We have a number of verses here. Proverbs 15, 6, 15, 8 through 9, and 15, 26 through 29. Let's read them. It says, In the house of the righteous there is much treasure, but trouble befalls the income of the wicked. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is acceptable to him. The way of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but he loves him who pursues righteousness. The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord, but gracious words are pure. Whoever is greedy for unjust gain troubles his own household, but he who hates bribes will live. The heart of the righteous ponders how to answer, but the mouth of the wicked pours out evil things. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayer of the righteous. Now, I hope you can see here, it's pretty obvious in the passage, that Solomon is contrasting two different approaches to life. One is the person he characterizes as the wicked. It's the person who pursues sinful things, who is in it for themselves, who is not at all interested in understanding the scripture or applying it to their lives. In fact, they want to be the God of their own life. They want to chart their own course. Contrasting to that, he highlights the life of the righteous. Now, a righteous person, obviously, is a person who lives in a way that is right. That's where the word righteous comes from. They do what God has instructed. They live according to his ways. And he shows here the benefits that come from being righteous and the liabilities that come from being wicked. Some of these are things that we've just mentioned in our title, how to get treasure, acceptance, and love. Well, those come from living a righteous life, from being among God's righteous people. And the converse is true. The wicked do not receive those things, even though it may seem like in the world's eyes, they have much treasure and they're accepted, and maybe they're loved by adoring fans. But the reality is that those who live a life of wickedness, God will see to it that in the end, they do not have those things. You see, the righteous way of life is God's way of life. And before you get all frustrated or, or feel overwhelmed by the monumental task it is to live that kind of life, let me give you some good news. If you have placed your faith in Jesus Christ, and by that I mean you've seen him as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and you've placed your faith in him saying, Jesus, I trust in you, not my good works, nothing I've done. I trust you alone to forgive my sin, to heal my sin sickness, and to make me new and righteous and holy in your eyes. Friends, if you have done that, Jesus has declared you righteous. In fact, he's gone further than declare it. He has exchanged your wickedness for his righteousness. It's called the imputed righteousness of Christ. So now when the Lord God looks on you as the judge of all the earth and the judge of every man, woman, child, he sees Jesus' righteousness when he looks at you. So all of these things are true of you. And now it's your privilege to live it out through obedience to God. And friends, that kind of life is the one that brings treasure, acceptance, and love in a variety of ways, not just in in finances and and people liking you and 
and good relationships. It, it just multiplies, and God is so creative in how he brings these things about for his righteous servants. Lord Jesus, thank you for making us righteous. Thank you for calling us into your family and doing everything necessary to appease the wrath of God and to place us into good stand, standing with him. Jesus, we want to be your righteous people, not just by virtue of what you've done for us, but in the way that we live. So empower us with your Holy Spirit and with wisdom to do that. We ask it in your name, Jesus. Amen.